In the world of gaming, mods are a particularly interesting subject. Amateur designers see a game, play a game, and decide, you know what, something's missing. Sometimes what's missing is the outright playability of the game. Whether through a sloppy port or a hasty release, modders can be instrumental in actually making sure a game is playable. Games like Dark Souls have been entirely saved by mods, for example. And then some modders decide that a game has entirely too little Macho Man Randy Savage. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to imply that the Skyrim Macho Man Dragon mod is equally important as the game-saving Dark Souls Fix mod. I'm not implying that at all. I am actively insisting on it. If you're playing Skyrim without dead pro wrestlers in it, then your standard of life is pitiful. You're missing out, I'm just saying. And I can't wait for the Owen Hart Frost Troll mod, by the way. So it's obvious that mods have become really important to the world of gaming in general. Whether the improvements are skin deep or straight to the bone, mods make a difference. And one of the most infamous mods in modern times would have to be The Long War. Released in 2013 for the 2012 XCOM Enemy Unknown, The Long War took what was already an in-depth and difficult strategy game and made it, well, longer. With new classes, weapons, and an emphasis on slower, more deliberate gameplay, The Long War quickly became a must-have piece of software for anyone who wanted a truly rich murder the shit out of Aliens experience. The Long War mod was so successful, in fact, that XCOM developer Firaxis came forward and hired the modding team responsible, charging them with the goal of creating a developer-sanctioned Long War mod for XCOM's 2016 sequel. This is a hell of a lot like J.K. Rowling reading your Harry Potter fanfiction and then choosing you to write a television show about the adventures of a young Severus Snape and his Mary Sue best friend who totally isn't based on me, you guys. I mean, it's weird you would even assume that. <laughs> guys. I've never reviewed a mod before, but I'm not the games journalist who plays by your daddy's rules. Just like Snape's incredibly handsome and talented partner in crime, Bill the Conquista Geek, who killed, like, 13 Dementors, and dates Scarlett Johansson, and is also a secret Jedi. Hear that, Dad? I'm not playing by your rules! Long War II is... long. And that's saying something, considering how long you could find yourself playing the vanilla XCOM 2. In the same vein as its predecessor, Long War II takes all of the challenging goodness that keeps you coming back to the XCOM project and expands heavily upon it. You're immediately able to assemble teams of up to 12 soldiers, and with 9 classes to choose from, the option to create highly specialized teams is not only available, it's encouraged. One of the things about XCOM 2 that I loved was the feeling of being an insurgent force that you started most missions undercover and had to play your cards just right to choose the perfect time to strike. That made me incredibly happy. I felt like Calvin with a water balloon, waiting for the exact perfect moment to get the drop on Susie Durkins for my treehouse. The chance that you'll attack at the wrong moment or get caught with your pants down is huge in Long War II, largely due to the fact that the aliens have insane amounts of backup now. Between roving bands of guards and sectoids and constant reinforcements being brought in after your discovery, I found on more than one occasion that there's no shame in just trying to avoid the enemy as much as you possibly can. If anything, the moments I was able to complete a mission without being discovered at all remain some of the most satisfying experiences I've had with XCOM 2. You'll have plenty of opportunities to figure out a preferred style of approach, given the fact that Long War II now has your various squads of soldiers hitting the ground to take on multiple missions at once. Rather than choose between three emergency situations, you're given individual missions as they come. You assign a squad to that mission and are given the opportunity to infiltrate. Essentially, you continue from HQ as your team gets to know the enemy location and slips silently into their ranks, like an M&M in a bowl of Skittles. 
In this way, you'll have several squads on different locations at the same time, and as their ability to infiltrate grows, you'll find yourself constantly battling at one location after another. And honestly, that was the beginning of my problem with Long War II. Because of the expansionary nature of this mod, you've got a lot of amazing goodies. I think the reworking of the classes and additions of new ones is completely intuitive, and it's fun figuring out what soldiers work best alongside each other. A sharpshooter and a shinobi, for example? Like Suri and McKellen and Patrick Stewart, there has literally never been a better friendship. But after battle after battle, you start to realize just how little you've actually gotten done. And I understand that that's the point of Long War II. It's right there in the title. But I have to wonder, how many people actually complete this mod from start to finish? I had a similar issue with Darkest Dungeon. Now, I adore Darkest Dungeon, for the record. It's a game I come back to time and time again. Hell, it was one of my top 2016 games of the year. And with the release of the Radiant Update, which allows for shorter game mode, I might actually beat the damn thing. Because here's the dirty little secret. I never beat Darkest Dungeon. With its epic length and hair-tearing difficulty, my several hour gaming sessions there almost always led to some sort of a rage quit. A rage quit that I would quickly forget about the next day. They say that women have a hormone in their brain that makes them forget the pain of childbirth. That without it, they would never have more than one child. Well, games like Darkest Dungeon and The Long War II are a lot like that. You play and play, thinking about how this time it's going to be great, and then four hours of labor later, your entire squadron is dead, you're out of intel, and your bouncing baby boy tells you he wants to major in art history. It's just... it's just such a bummer. But for what it is, there's no way you can call Long War II anything but an incredible accomplishment in modding. It took what was already an entertaining, challenging game and managed to improve on it in some key areas. For gamers who are looking for an experience that'll keep them occupied and sweating for months at a time, I highly recommend it. You'll never play Vanilla XCOM 2 ever again. For the rest of us, it makes for a massively intimidating challenge that we'll get to in two hour bites, here and there, mostly for the rest of our lives. Who knows? If we're really dedicated, we might beat it before our first or second grandkid is born. I'm joking. Long War II will make sure that you never have enough time to have kids. Hey, buddy, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy, get sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sing a little drinky past you.